Hi, I'm Pastor Phil Wyman from the Gathering in Salem, Massachusetts, and this is our interview with an atheist day that we participated in, something that Kyle B. Jones started. Kyle used to go to church here, and now he's an atheist. Seemed to change my mind, seemed to change my side. Well, anyway, here's the interview with my friend Jonas Green, who also happens to be a friend of the Gathering. Kyle Jones used to go to church here. Now, so this is evidence that the gathering creates atheists. Um, <laughs> because Kyle wasn't an atheist when he went to church here. But then he went to a seminary and he uh, became a fundamentalist Baptist, I think, and then he became an atheist. That may be the, Which the pattern of... Which he was at Gordon Conwell Seminary. Uh, moved out here from California, went to Gordon Conwell. And now uh, he's, he's got a doctorate in philosophy, um, and he's currently in New York, and he started this interview in Atheist at Church Day. So thanks, Kyle, for doing this. Um, so Jonas has been part of this with us before. Uh, we had an Atheist dialogue with Jim Henderson um, some years back, and Jonas and two other friend of his and another Atheist sat down with Jim Henderson, and so we had this dialogue not to debate, but to find out, yeah, basically, what I, how I view the world, and uh, that's more of what this is going to be, um, sort of comparative. Um, but you'll see when we get to the questions exactly how I view the world, because honestly, it's not like all atheists. We are different. You're going to see a little bit about how I see things. Okay. So Great. Mm -hmm. And what do, you, what do you do for work, Jonas? Well, right now I'm in IT, as I was back actually when we were um, did the last interview. I'm just now at a different company, and basically I do IT support for Raytheon, and uh, you know keep their stuff going, <laughs> <laughs> keep their tech, all that technical equipment and stuff going and working. You know. Okay. The rest of that's classified. So. Now, now you, Jonas has. Um, his his own word. This is his own phrase to describe himself. Um, I haven't heard anybody use it, and I asked him where it came from. And he said, "Oh, that's that's yeah, how I define myself." That's, that's how I, I coined this. Um, I call myself basically an agno deist, which, uh, if you're familiar with theism versus deism, theism is what you preach, where there's a God who may have a plan for you, and perhaps by prayer you find out what that plan is and help yourself guide yourself toward that or you pray to Jesus you know and he's this is an interactive relationship fundamentally I don't believe in any type of God of that sort be it you know Jesus Muhammad Allah but I'm not uh, you know a PhD physicist something like that so uh, agno deus means there could have been a god who, as part of a science experiment, said, let me twist the dials and make the, the gravitational constant this and the speed of light this and so forth. So the entire universe, which is fascinating and wonderful and exciting and, and all of that, could be an experiment by some type of god, a deistic god, which is to me irrelevant because I have no way to reach him, but I can't say that he didn't exist either. No, don't know. Deus could be, it could okay. be a doctor. So could now, be that type of guy. Now, if I was if I was to think of atheism in a, in a hard sense, that seems like an an extension beyond kind of the classical terms of atheism versus agnosticism, um, and that that seems to be a general trend in atheism today. Is that the definition is is it getting broader? I think so. Uh, from what I've seen, they're all of those terms of weak atheism, strong atheism, and who you ask, you know, do you deny the existence of gods? Do you uh, d explicitly not believe in, you know, the god Thor, the god Jehovah? But um, I think, the, like the, as I said, the key part to me is while for example, you have this entire community around you, and these people are definitely here. Uh, it's, it's, you need to reach out to those people in times of need or friendship. And it's not that they were, you know, they're not placed here by 
this other being, this external God. Um, that's how I see it. So we're gonna, I'm going to ask him a couple of questions that I know are standard for a lot of people I talk to who want to know how atheists think or how could you even, how could you be an atheist? And, and, and one, of, one, of, one of those questions has to do with the, um, the structure of ethics and morality and it's been commonly said down through Christian history that without God anything goes, that there is no moral structure without a God. Um, I know that you don't 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 live don't live that way, and you don't feel that way. So how do you justify or find a place for a moral structure outside of the context of a God who gives us ten commandments? Right. Well, the um, there's a classic reply to that, which I won't give you. But we do live in a society. Oh, we they have might to, want it. Oh, do you do you know the? You don't know that one. Um, the, the classic reply, I, I, maybe the classic reply is X Y Z. You can pick something, pick any topic. Is um, driving on the right side of the road is moral, and driving on the left side of the road is immoral, because A, it's a good idea we thought of and we adopted it, and we could have anyway, or B, only because God told us. So our morals moral arbitrarily because of God what? because this is what God wants, or could we have figured them out without his assistance? That's the classic reply. Um, I, and I take that left and right, that left right driving on the road is easy enough because I suppose my morals come from living in 20th century America and things of like how we live here, like I could say uh, monogamy, you know, living together in a classical, um, traditional husband, wife, children, nuclear family, generally a good idea. Personally, I'm liberal enough to extend that to single mothers, to uh, gay couples and marriage equality because, you know, of the rights and responsibilities that I feel that they should have, you know, for example. So, so if you ask me on a, you know, how I stand on certain issues, I'll be, I'll give you those issues. But you also find Christians, for example, who are either you know, for all for marriage equality, or they're, you know, the other side of conservative, and you know, marriage should be only man and woman. So it, it's it's not just this is what it has to be spelled out in a book, you know. So so do you have a place that you find or you root your moral behavior that that you look and you say this is right because. Yeah, I, and I think the, the basic issue has a lot to be do with um, how it affects others. Do I feel empathy towards others? Um, I understand, like, if I do something, it might hurt them, even though it gives me pleasure and that's a bad thing. You know, so I try to minimize the amount of hurt and, in you know, try to make the world a better place be it by contributing to a, a charity, be it by actively being involved in something, um, simply taking a stand and voting in an election, you know. Right. Okay, now I'm going to move to this next thought. And, and, and this is a very common thing I hear people say. When I go through difficult times, leaning on God becomes so important to me, I can't fathom going through the hardest things in life without God. How, so how, as someone who doesn't look to a God personally interacting with you, um, do you handle well, I, times? Yeah, and I, th I think for me, I recognize that there are support services out there, not to mention friends and family, particularly family. Um, like, I'll give you an example. Um, this, I was reminded of this recently when I was coming back from vacation and two friends of ours who were supposed to leave at midnight, but, you know, the midnight before when we got there the morning at the airport, they were still waiting for their plane to take off and things like that, and were like panicky, what do I do, you know. They had each other, they were a husband and wife that, you know, had each other and, and they had their strengths to get through. Um, I was stuck once at RPI, it was a freshman orientation, I was on my way back, I was at the Greyhound bus station ready to buy a ticket with a check. 
And those days I had these starter checks with no name on them, and I didn't have a picture ID because I didn't have my learner's permit yet, that kind of thing. So, you know, they wouldn't accept it. Fortunately, I had a little bit of change. I called Dad, and eventually, and I grew by this experience, sequence of events, um, I, Dad was able to wire me money, uh, and I was able to then take a cab to the Western Union, get the money, pay the cab driver. Uh, RPI was able to let me stay an additional night, and eventually I was able to get home. Now, all of that is, all of these things that are set up, you know, just simply to get us out of, you know, that, that I followed. But two important things. One, had my father and I, you know, whatever, had he needed to come to that Greyhound station to pick me up, had I, uh, then he would have, and I know, knew that, <coughs> but I was able to grow and learn from this experience. Along the way, also, I had the most wonderful time interacting with a couple of vagrants who were at the Greyhound bus station. This is true. They bought me coffee. They understood. They listened. They read that every day. And I'm like, shocked. This, this shouldn't happen to me. I'm, I'm above that. I'm upper middle class. Yep, yuppie, you know. So now in the Boston area, we've gone through this thing with the... Um, the bombing of the marathon, and now there's a whole community in uh, in a struggle moment of dealing with crisis and difficulty that has happened, tragedy in our own community. How do you, as an uh, uh, atheist, agnodeist, look at your place with the rest of the community? Many people, Christians, there may be. Muslims who are now feeling um, ostracized from the community because they're wondering if everybody is looking at them now that you know we know that the bombers were of Islamic persuasion. Um, how how do you look at yourself fitting into that and, and the atheist community fitting into a voice of help in these times of need for yeah. for a larger area? Well, I think, yeah, I, I think that's certainly an example of one where everybody was affected. And, you know, of course, you have the One Boston Fund to assist those who were personally injured. Um, you have three people whose lives were lost and the families of those people who need to um, go to whatever grief counseling and, and find therapists that they can work with uh, for them, right? You know, what, a therapist that that you work with might not be for me. Um, the, um, I think, and again, as far as a community, there are people like Greg something at Harvard, at Harvard who um, has organized that uh, so that those who don't feel right going to an interfaith service can at least come to, to that healing service. Um, as a, and again, as a local community. I think, looking back, I think what, um, you know, the city of Boston did during the lockdown and Watertown did was great. I think we can look to individual heroes and say, wow, I can, I'm, I'm really proud of this guy, the guy who, you, you know, uh, was carjacked and then he escaped and called 911, you know, that amount you know, that amount of working together, even even consider this. Um, you got you all those first responders on the scene who suddenly took action and knew what to do. Great. They helped. And then think of the people running away, either through fear or whatever. At the very least, they're getting out of the way and letting the people who know what they're doing uh, get in and, and have that space. Um, so I think... You know, it's, I don't think anybody during the lockdown, you know, for example, was cowering away in fear or, um, you know, relying on something else, wishing they could just defend themselves, because that's fiction, right? Um, the Vigilante in the new series, Arrow, yeah, if I could go out, I could just, you know, kill these two who did it. Great, then I wouldn't know uh, who helped them, who, uh, it wouldn't be justice, it wouldn't, 
we wouldn't have learned anything from it. And I think that's what we see when I look at look back at the marathon and I look at you know the incredible work that was done by um, you know not just the police and the law enforcement, but the hospitals and the the individual people who knew first aid on the scene and stuff like that. It was all a gigantic team effort, um, and we're all there, and we're not going to let them come by. Um, the last point I want to say to those who are of the Muslim faith, things like that, that your Muslim faith is probably not theirs any more than I'd be able to get this guy to come to my wedding and perform the ceremony if he were a Western Westboro Baptist Church. You know, it just he wouldn't have fit. Uh, and that's and, actually a note that I did perform his wedding. Yeah, he did. And and, and again, it, it didn't. I didn't have to do this type. With, do something like you guys might have. He did it the way he wanted it, and he was okay with it. So, so um, Jonas Green. I'm Pastor Phil Wyman. This is a note for YouTube. And Kyle Jones. Thanks for interviewing Atheist at Church Day. Yeah. Thank you very much. And thanks for videoing it, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Good job.